it's very easy for me, for me to run into the pantry and make sweet love to a can of Pringles uh, <laughs> on a daily basis. <laughs> smooth stylings of jason noakes leading us up to episode number 17 of the promo upfront podcast hey i'm one of your hosts bill petrie with me as always the patron of politics policy presidential elections and mittens the one and only kirby hossaman kirby how the hell are you i'm doing well because i uh, actually voted already and so the way that works is once you vote all of the facebook uh divisiveness goes away the ads mm. stop playing mm -mm. everything goes away and you get oh. to go back to the bliss that was before the coronavirus and the presidential campaign so i'm doing great how about you well you're a horrible liar because that <laughs> doesn't unfortunately happen i have also cast my vote with my family first two first time voters awesome. um casting their ballots for kanye west i'm pretty sure but uh who knows <laughs> Uh, no, doing well and uh, ready to podcast with you because I'm in a really good mood. And do you want to know why I'm in such a good mood? I actually would love to know that. <sighs> Thank you for knowing to ask that. I'm in a good mood because our title sponsor is none other than Promo Pulse. That's right. That's right. You know, for years, back when they started the industry, right in 1890 something or so, yeah. there was a movement. Uh, and a lot of people don't realize this. There was a big movement of creating an app for... <laughs> the promotional products industry, but you know, didn't get a lot of traction. Right. Um, a lot of people said, Hey, people aren't ready for it. People aren't going to use it that much. And there's even a small segment that said, Hey, we technology from a technology perspective, we can't build that, but you know who figured that out? That'd What's be that? the one and only Jason Noakes from promo pulse. So it's your one stop app for everything in the promotional products industry. You can do three things there. You can search, save and share. That's right. Search, save and share. And you know how much I love the alliteration there, Kirby. Uh, you mm. can share content. So search, shape, save, and share content from the entire industry from one spot. And I know you love looking at that every, uh, app every morning. In fact, Jason's giving me the back end. I know exactly when you look at the app. <laughs> well, that's impressive. Uh, no, yeah, it's, it's one of those pieces that I think it's a tool that is valuable for any of us in the industry yeah. because you get to keep a pulse on what's going on. I mean, for me, like I'm not a person who, you know, goes by the specials each day, but I do right. try to pay attention to what the thought leaders in our industry are saying. And that's a place that is great to catch up with it. Absolutely. And you can always just email yourself for those thought leader thoughts. Um, <laughs> but you know, you're right. It is a great place to do those things. Find all those things, find those supplier specials if that's what you're looking for, but also find what you were talking about with what the thought leaders are, are writing about or thinking. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's such a great place for ideas, inspiration, and information. It's, and and it's, it's free. The, and it's free. Thank you, Kirby. It's almost as if you're looking at my notes. <laughs> wow. It's free. Yeah. You know what that means? It doesn't cost you anything. You know what that means? It's free. So head over to your local app store, whether that's uh, Apple or Google Play. Uh, you actually don't have to head over there. You can just pick up your phone and do it because it's generally installed on your mobile device. But go ahead and down, look for, uh, go ahead and look for promo pulse and you can just click that handy download button you're not going to be sorry you did now kirby people can listen to us or watch us in a variety of manners right yeah, they can right. go to the brand of eight website they can go to youtube and subscribe by just searching for brand of eight they can go to uh apple Podcasts, google play stitcher or um a spotify and and search for brand of eight radio there's a million ways but we ask that you like you subscribe if you like what you're hearing please do. It helps us uh, out a lot. So Kirby, with that being said, it is the Promo Upfront podcast, which means we have a topic we start with, and that would be in the promotional products industry. And today you have the honor of kicking off this, let's call it a pumpkin spice latte level podcast <laughs> wow, for our okay. friend Shannon Laredo. Okay, cool. Uh, so I was going back and forth on which topic I wanted to bring up and I'm going to go. So events in the industry. Okay. So I have been to several in-person yep. events in the industry and you and I yep. were talking about that. And sure. I think the, the, the last time, you know, we did uh, the Kalahari event with OPA and mm -hmm. we did a golf outing, which again, I think a lot of yeah. people are doing those. 
but the uh, end user shows. Yeah. And so you and I's conversation, if people want to go back and listen to it, is you were kind of apprehensive, I think. If I, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but you're like, I hope we're doing okay, but I'm a little concerned. Um, and I think, if I understand correctly, you attended an event today um, in the industry. I did. Right? Um, yeah. And, and just to clarify, I wasn't just sort of apprehensive. It was more of, I want to watch and see right. what's happening. Right. Yeah. So, and I didn't mean it as a judgment. No. I just meant you were a little, again, just, uh... Kirby, I've been married 26 years. I'm used to being judged. It's fine. <laughs> so you know, it was called the trunk and treat, a uh, little traveling show from the uh, promotional product association, the mid South. And uh, they do uh, by uh, this will drop on Friday. So by the time this drops, they'll have done three three shows in kind of an outdoor area. One in Memphis. Today was in Nashville, and then on Thursday was or is or was, depending on your perspective, uh, in Chattanooga. Mm -hmm. And uh, Mark Farah was who's the executive director of the the PPAMS asked me if I'd stop by and I'm like, absolutely. And it was only a couple of miles from my house, so it was so ridiculously convenient. And headed over there and. What I enjoy, first of all, I'm starving just to see humans yeah. in, in their natural And I know that about you. It's one of the reasons I kind of wanted to get your take on it. Yeah. So I, I, I donned my mask and uh, it was happy to see people. You know, it wasn't as awkward as I thought. There wasn't a lot of those weird, am I shaking this guy's hand? Am I not? So yeah. a couple elbow bumps, a couple pats on the back, a couple fist bumps, nothing major. To a person, everybody had their masks on, which mm -hmm. I really appreciated. And no one did the weird chin strap thing where they're like, I'm wearing a mask, but I'm not covering anything that <laughs> makes me breathe. Um, but, you know, people were respectful. They kept distance. And, you know, I think everybody just felt it's really, really, really nice to be out here. Mm -hmm. um, so I enjoyed it. I was only there for about, it was a small show, maybe 22 or so uh, yeah. ex uh, exhibitors. I was there for half hour, 45 minutes, said, you know, talk to a few people and it was lovely. It was wonderful. And I think you'll see those get bigger. I think you'll, we'll figure out you know, how we can manage our way through the, the pandemic. So I thought it was fantastic. And, you know, they took my temperatures. I went in and I saw Mark walking around and taking temperature checks every once in a while, people, which I thought was not, uh, not over the top, but certainly another layer of Totally. That's a really cool idea. And so I thought they did a really terrific job under, and, you know, it was an outdoor pavilion and it was pouring down rain. And so it was, it was not the most ideal of conditions, but I thought they did a fantastic job. Yeah. I, I one of the reasons I sort of wanted to, I, I was hoping that this was, again, I mean, we hadn't talked about this. So I was hoping that, you know, they would have done all those precautions. It's one of the things we were proud of at OPA that we, we were adamant about masks and, yeah. and hand sanitizers and temperature checks. And I think that not only does it, is that the right reason to do that is because it's the safe thing to do, but I right. think it really does, just like you talked about it, it made me feel mm -hmm. good and safe because we were taking it seriously. Mm -hmm. And, and my, I was curious to know if your feeling was sort of the same as mine. It was like, while I was tired at the end of it, I was like, oh my God, yeah. it just feels good to be, have a semblance of sort of normalcy, even if I yeah. have to do the mask, even yeah. if I have to distance, you know, well, that I mean? was a thing. Yeah. I had a great conversation with Matt Odell from, from Brentwood line yeah. and uh, Javier from showdown. It had some great conversations with people. It was just, again, nice to see people. Kimberly Berkey Stunkel from, from PCNA. It was great to just see some people. So absolutely, you know, I, it, we'll figure it out and each event will have pluses and minuses, but I think the more protocols, the better for right now. Yeah. And, and again, I think each of us learn from each other and sort of to your point from our last conversation is that we need to not get lax. Correct. Right. Like Correct. It, we keep doing the things that are allowing us to do it with no uh, spread. Yep. <laughs> Let's not get cocky about it. And then yep. we can still have these kind of things. So, okay, totally, cool. I totally just wanted your take. I, you, you've now got it. Kirby ship again is coming ship again. <laughs> Sorry. Is that a very abrupt transition? It was fairly abrupt. Sorry. It's okay. Kirby, so coming up is Shipageddon. Yeah, are you familiar with this? Are you familiar with the Shipageddon? I, I, I think I know where you're going, but I'm, I'm curious to hear. Well, if you're in the promotional products industry, you might want to pay attention. Yeah. There's going to be a massive holiday shipping crunch. Yes. Uh, both FedEx and UPS have, or they're already at shipping capacity for the remainder of the year today. It is uh, October 30th when we drop this, they're shipping capacity now. Um, and they're thinking that the capacity shortfall could reach as high as 7 million packages per 
day between Thanksgiving and Christmas. Um, the president of Ship Matrix, which is a software provider in the shipping industry, said consumers should be prepared for deliveries to take extra days regardless of carrier. And so this is just, it's not a, is this going to happen? It looks right. like this is going to happen. So let's focus on how are you communicating that to your clients? Because this is, you know, we're entering the fourth quarter where normally in, in a, a regular year, 40% of your sales are, how are you making sure that you're communicating, you know, the shipping, you know, it's out of your control. So are you communicating that to your clients? If so, how? No, I love this topic. So it's funny. I actually uh, have a topic that talks about managing clients' expectations. So well, not anymore. You don't. Yeah, that's right. We, we, we both have it now. Yeah. Uh, so we actually had this conversation in a staff meeting um, a couple days ago with our mm -hmm. team. And it, because I think it's, it's a total package of conversation because the ship again, as you call mm -hmm. it, is, is a piece of it, but so is stock again. Yep. Like, oh yeah. Uh, so the idea of what we've been kind of going, we've created a blog that talked about three facts about corporate giving for our clients. I created a video that covered the same topic. It was essentially the three facts are, yeah. it's really important to do it more important than ever. It's harder than ever. And yeah. you better order now. Absolutely. <laughs> Those, yeah. And so no um, I think and by doing that, one of the things I said to the team was not only the, the shipping piece, but, um, the the stock challenges and this mm -hmm. is not a shot at suppliers no. it makes sense that they have stock issues it's um, just real yeah it's just real um but one of the things i said is by getting in front of that and we've actually had that i've had the uh, the tale of two experiences one we had a company store close uh and we placed the order and like half of it was back ordered mm -hmm. and that client is freaking out and shame on me i didn't tell them in advance that that could be mm -hmm. a problem Right. I've rent, I've fixed that. I have another order that's hopefully coming and it's going to be a nice order, mm -hmm. but I told them in advance and I can tell you right now, the, the quarter zip they want is not happening. Right. <laughs> um, but they were immediately like, Oh, we get it because yeah. I communicated it. And so I think it's super important. Yeah. You know, one of the common threads that runs through our conversations in when there's friction, when there's problems, mm -hmm. when there are challenges, is that communication fixes so much, maybe 90% of things, right? Yeah. If you communicate up front, manage expectations up front, yeah. and I know we're kind of trouting on, on your topic, but you manage nope, those expectations. Good. When you have information like this, and it's not fear mongering, you're not no. doing that. It's saying, hey, this is what we're hearing. This is not to make you spend money faster than you normally would. It's just, you need this information now so that you can plan accordingly. And, and if you don't do that, if, you're not, if you as a distributor out there are not doing this, you are really doing your clients in a tremendous disservice and you're giving them opportunities really to, to drop you like a hot potato and go elsewhere. Yeah. It's you're doing your clients a disservice. You're doing yourself a disservice. No because question. I think when you do communicate that there's, there's still going to be people who are pissed off, of course, but I think you actually decrease that. It decreases your stress. Cause you're like, mm -hmm. Hey, I, 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 this is what I was telling you about. I, it reminds me, you actually did a great job of sort of teaching me this through the tariff conversation. Um, we knew something was coming mm -hmm. with the tariffs and by getting out in front of it and just saying, Hey, this is what is going on. This is what this means to you. Yeah. This is why this, your marketing might cost more. We did that. And it was like, whether it got, it affected them or not, they felt like we were a trusted resource that we're trying to help them understand what was going on. And so I just think that's good. Yeah, no question. When you're in sales, we're always looking for those touch points. How do I connect with my my customer so that they know I'm around? And, and, and there's nothing more, and I, I'm on record saying this, there's nothing I hate more than, I was just calling to see how things are going and or check in or whatever. This is a an opportunity for a touch point. Hey, Mr. Customer, I've got some information. I just want to share this with you real quick. You're not selling anything. We always talk about positioning yourself as a consultant, someone who's helping. Nothing displays that better than what we're talking about right now is yeah. telling them this could be an issue for your, your fall thing. So good, yeah. good topic, you know, cause it is important that you get your favorite promotional products on right. time. And speaking of favorite promotional <laughs> products, Kirby, yes, I have a favorite promotional product today. Okay. Um, you know me, I Dude. like beverages. So, um, you, I know you have, a lot of people have. So one of my favorite beverages, and I just, you know, is this Waterloo? Are you familiar with Waterloo? It's a tremendous sparkling water. It tastes like grape soda, but no, no sugar and no sweetener. It's just okay, really cool. good. But to keep it cold, and this is ice cold, I can barely hold it in my billy hand. It's so cold <laughs> because it has been sitting in this awesome, 
amazing. Coleman uh, Lounger Can Stainless Koozie. I love this thing. It, it, it's, first of all, it's, it weighs a lot. And it's high quality. I mean, it is steel. It is 100% steel. Nice. And it keeps a can or a bottle cold. I, I, I don't like to tell people how much I know science, but it keeps <laughs> it cold 975 hours. Okay. That's a lot. Now, I can't verify that. No. no, but in all seriousness, it's a great piece. I love koozies. And I used to love like the slip on koozies and things like that. Once I found, <laughs> excuse me, once I found this thing, not going back anywhere, yeah. nowhere. Love it. Yeah. Well, it's, it's the kind of, the idea of, of the original koozie is one thing and, and they're great, but mm -hmm. this is one that like literally, especially even on a hot day or whatever, I love those kind that actually. This thing is out. amazing. Amazing. Speaking of amazing, Kirby, do you have another topic for us? I do. I do. So I'm going to get, uh, this is a little bit off uh, the industry, and but uh -oh. I- um, wanted your kind of take on this. Mm -hmm. So what I have written down is breaking out of a rut. So this time of year, uh, and you know this about me, we've been friends mm -hmm. for a long time. Mm -hmm. um, this time of year, I, I sometimes struggle uh, about the November timeframe where yep. the, the days start getting shorter, it starts getting colder. Um, and it was funny, I can, I can feel myself, I, because I know myself at this point, I can feel myself starting to slip into it. And um, like this morning, dogs were up early. I'm out getting rained on, you know, at 4.30 in the morning. And there's nothing wrong. There's nothing wrong. Everything is fine. And I'm in a mood the moment I wake up. Mm. And I, I, I struggle with that. And I'm a, you know, I'm, I'm trying to pride myself on being a positive mm. guy most of the time. But I think it's important to, A, acknowledge that there are times even that everybody struggles with this. Right. And number two, I think these are the times where I'm like, okay, I have some ideas on how to break out of a rut, mm -hmm. but I guess I wanted to get your take on if there's anything that you, A, if you ever struggle with this, and then B, what you do to kind of re, restart your computer. Okay. Yeah. So I know as we approach November that you pretty much have a permanent case of the Mondays um, <laughs> just because you don't like the shorter days. You don't yeah. like the cold weather. I can already see your brain spinning about how many times you're going to have to get the snow thrower out and <laughs> those types of, you know, I got to get up earlier because I got to start my car. So it's got to run a while to yeah. melt the ice on the windshield. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think especially in where we're at now in society. I just, I was, yeah. And I think that is compounding it. Yeah. I was telling Sandy, mm -hmm. my wife, everybody else in my house gets to go somewhere every day, <laughs> yeah. all day. Right. My kids go to school and, and she works in the school district. So she goes to work every day and I'm here. Mm -hmm. Now I go work out every morning. I go, I go to the gym every morning. The gyms are still open, very safe, socially distanced, so on and so forth. But then I go to Kroger to get some food because I don't know what we're going to eat that night. And then I come home, I take a shower, I let out the dog and I start my day. And so I try to break that rut by going somewhere else in the morning. Maybe I go to Publix, a different grocery store. So I've, I've fallen in this habit of, of take, getting in this weird routine, resenting said weird routine, yeah. creating another routine that I immediately get sick of. <laughs> and so I, honestly, I'm struggling. What I'm struggling with right now is I, for my life personally, I don't have any words of wisdom. Um, my life, I feel like is permanently Groundhog Day. Yeah, that's so, yeah. It, and, and it's a really, really shitty version of it, quite frankly. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's not horrible, but I'm just bored. Mm -hmm. I'm bored. But, you know, I, I try, what I try to do, not to necessarily restart my computer, it's I try to continue making healthy choices because that's an easy thing for me not to do. Um, mm -hmm. I, I love my junk food. It's how I grew up. And so it's very easy me, for me to run into the pantry and make sweet love to a can of Pringles uh, <laughs> on a daily basis. Um, Thank you for that. <laughs> <laughs> there's your opener folks. But no, I, I, I try an to image. <laughs> I tried, I try to, <laughs> Oh, once you pop, you can't stop. All right. So, but I, the way I try to break the routine, I, I, I I really try to vary things up, but I'm struggling with it because I just don't have, I don't feel like I have the opportunities to. So mm -hmm. one of the things I'm trying to do is, is once a week, try to find something else to cook. I'm not, haven't been very successful at that because it's very hard because the mm -hmm. kids work and everybody's, I can't like just stop what I'm doing some days at three o'clock and start messing with dinner. Mm -hmm. 
I don't have an answer. So I guess what I'm going to do is commiserate with you <laughs> yeah. that, um, you know, I think we're all stuck in a rut. And, and I, so I look forward to things like Halloween. I'm praying they don't cancel it in my neighborhood. It's going right. to be a beautiful day. And I've got all sorts of things planned. I'm bringing my portable bar out there, I'm bringing the fire pit out there. I'm going to wheel out the, the big TV I have on a stand to watch football and just enjoy some time with neighbors, socially distanced, of course. So it's things like that that are getting me through. So like I'm, I've kind of, I'm kind of embraced with the routine I've got. It, it just is what it is. Yeah. And, and you know, find... like I, I'm a big be- believer and a fan of having a routine. Yeah, so that's fine. Too. But, but I will say that like, and I, I and again, I, I, I always say like, everything's fine. And I think yeah. that's, it's almost ultra frustrating. Cause you know, like I leave a, lead a very blessed life. I like this. Sure. There are just times where I'm like, I just need to like, so like today I, after we do this and then I'll probably work on editing it. I'm, I may go to the gym. I never go to the yeah. gym just to do something different. Yeah. So, like I said, so and that's what you're, so routine and ruts very closely yeah. aligned, yeah. sadly. Yeah. Um, you know, I look forward to things, big things. Like I, I used to do a college trip with my friends every year. Mm. We're talking about doing one in December, getting an Airbnb in a city where that they have places like I can cook and we can just hang out. Yeah. Um, so things like that, like in Halloween, those are the things that I have something to look forward to. That's important to me right now to have something to look forward to. Yeah, it's funny you say that because I've all of a sudden started looking at vacations. Yeah. And it's just like, I, it, and I always say that part of the thrill of a vacation is kind of anticipating mm-hmm. the vacation. You know, obviously being there is awesome, but just sort of thinking about it. And so, yeah, I'm with yeah. you. Okay. No, well, hey, look, hey, look, vacations, I, I've always classified vacations thusly. Uh, better than the actual trip, better than the, be, better than the memory. It's the moment of anticipation. Yeah. This is the best. Yeah. All right, Kirby. Um, I know how much of a big fan you are of quick service food or fast food, as you might have called it in earlier days. Yep. I believe if I remember right, right off of Main Street is a Burger King. It's very close by, correct? Or is that yep. Wendy's? Wendy's is what you're thinking of. I think, okay. Yeah. It doesn't matter. Actually, actually they're all matter. close by. Yeah. But the, you have a Burger King in town, correct? Yes, I do. Well, you may have the option very soon to try out reusable packaging. Have you seen this? No. Okay. So Burger King is trying out reusable packaging at a few locations uh, through a partnership with the Loop platform. And Loop is a collective effort from companies like Procter & Gamble, Nestle, Unilever, to um, limit waste by offering products in reusable packaging. So they're in a couple cities right now, Tokyo, Portland, New York. I'm sure Kashokton's next. For a small deposit, uh, you get either a brown branded sandwich container, your old clamshell you know, hamburger container or a sealed um, a drinking vessel, like a cup, okay? Mm-hmm. And then when you, you return them to the restaurant, they can bring the, uh, when you go back to the restaurant, you can bring back the packaging to be cleaned through their closed loop system. And then once you return the packaging, you get the refund on the initial deposit. And McDonald's is doing this in the United Kingdom. And then I thought, as I was looking at this, this may be the next greatest opportunity in our industry, mm-hmm. quite frankly. <clears throat> if people are enjoying that type of food, and they get a Big Mac or they get a Whopper from uh, Burger King or whatever. What a cool thing to try to eliminate waste from the environment that you can get your food in a reusable container. You bring it back to the store. They will wash it out for you and sanitize it and put your next meal in, the, in another one. I think it's a phenomenal, phenomenal opportunity Good. if it gets legs. Yeah. So it's interesting. My, my initial reaction was you're going to hand me something that's reusable in the middle of the pandemic. Mm-hmm. I, I, my initial reaction was, uh, I know uh, I could see you bristle. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, I don't think I want that. Yeah. Um, that being said, like, again, I think as we understand, we're going to come out of this at some point. Uh, mm-hmm. The idea of uh, figuring out a way to create less of a footprint is really important. And I do yeah. think to your point, the idea that we could, um, create branding opportunities through what we do mm-hmm. is yeah. it, I, I think that does make sense. And I think that not only, um, it, it, I guess I got to get my head around how they're going to wash it and well, how they're going to sanitize it and all that sort I'm of thing. I'm sure they'll figure it out. But I mean, what I think was from a branding opportunity, wouldn't you want to create some, some uh, reusable products that they're so cool. I don't want to bring it back. I don't want my deposit yeah. back. Well, it's about creating your tribe. We talk a lot Absolutely. about that. And yeah, I think that that, no, that's, that, that is actually pretty interesting. Back when I was a distributor, my goal was always to create promo that was good enough to steal. Yeah. And that's, this oh. is an opportunity for that. So I just wanted to bring that up, Kirby. I brought it up. 
What is, do you have another topic or what are we doing here? You're in charge of this thing, not me. Okay, I, I'll, give, I'll give you one more and then I think you got the game, right? This oh, year? I've got the okay. game, baby. <laughs> okay, all right. So I want to talk about creating plans for 2020. Okay. So, or 2021, excuse me. Um, so I guess sort of my take on this is a month ago, two months ago, I actually think I said to somebody, anybody who's thinking too much further than a week out is out of their mind. Right. Um, but I, so at least in my mind, I'm starting to get a feel for things and mm -hmm. my, I'm starting to move uh, toward thinking about 21, 2021. Okay. I don't know if I'm premature. I feel like, it, it, I guess the way I'm looking at it is I feel like that's a good sign. I feel like that's a good sign for my business. I think I, I feel like it's a good sign that we're uh, starting to turn a bit of a corner. How about you? Are you, is the, is the audience, are we yeah. planning for 2021 yeah. yet or is it too soon? This would be a great opportunity for the audience to chime in what they're doing. I, I, don't, I don't think you ever stop planning, regardless right. of the outside forces that are outside of your control, right? right. Whether it's hurricane season, COVID-19, whatever. Yeah. You have to plan. You have to plan. You have to set goals. I think the goals and the plans might be different mm -hmm. than they would have been maybe a year ago or if there wasn't a global pandemic. Mm -hmm. But they are goals in their plans nevertheless. And if you don't have those things, if you're just waiting for things to get better... Mm -hmm. Look, there's two types of people in the world. There's doers and non-doers. It's just that simple. Mm -hmm. Doers are the ones who are like, I'm going to make the best of this. I'm going to plow through and I will get through the other side and, and it might be good. It might be bad, but at least it'll be on my terms. Right. And then you have the non-doers who are pretty content to say, man, when things get back to normal, I'm going to kick so much ass. <laughs> and it just doesn't work that way. It yeah. just, life doesn't work that way. So I think you have to make plans. I think you might want to tamp them down a little bit, be realistic, but uh, you know, taking outside forces outside your control into consideration. But again, a uh, you know, you plan to fail. If you want to plan to fail, you fail to plan. So. Yeah, I will tell you though, to to tell on myself for a moment, like mm -hmm. like a month ago, I like it was just too much. I I, yeah. I was so focused on just survival mode. Yeah. I the idea of thinking a whole year in advance was like crazy, but I, I don't know. I, I somehow well, I turned start the corner. Think, maybe you start by a couple months in advance. Maybe just look at the first right. quarter. And that's what I do. Yeah. Um, and the one thing I would say is we've all been in crisis mode. I'm right. still, we're all still kind of in crisis mode. Being in crisis mode at some point is a choice. Right. Okay? A lot of times you're in a crisis mode because it's forced upon you. Yeah. I'd say for right now, most of us are in a crisis mode because of choice. So maybe choose not to be in crisis mode. All right, Kirby, before I get to the, the game, the ASI Power 50 came out. Congratulations to anyone on the Power 50 ASI. Thank you very much for that list. It's a great list. We go through it every year. No sense in going through all of it. Is there anything you want to say about that list, Kirby? Uh, you know what? Yeah, I, I'm glad you brought it up. So okay. I, I do actually enjoy this list. I do too. Uh, very uh, much. I think that the, you know, the, the top group kind of bounces around and, yeah. and every year I'm like, Jeremy Lee Law is number one this year. Good. Yep. Makes sense. And, yep. and Mark and Joanne and Greg and yep. you know, all those folks are great. I think my one take was that Alan Tabaski ended up at number eight and we yeah. as an industry decided to up didn't, three didn't want him out on our board. Shame yeah. On us. Yeah. Well, <laughs> no, not shame on me. Not, I, I am not part Same. of that. But yeah. Um, Michelle Bell and her staff do at ASI do a tremendous job putting that list together. You should check it out over at the website, asicentral.com. It's a really great list and there's some great people on there, personal friends of ours. Um, totally. and can, but congratulations to everybody, everybody. on that list. Uh, we'd be remiss if we didn't mention that. Also be remiss, Kirby, if we didn't mention that next Tuesday is indeed election day. <laughs> As such, we have a fun game today at the party in the back. Oh, okay. We are going to play presidential nicknames. I need you to match the nickname with the president. Now, how up are you on your uh, presidents? Oh, I'm going to suck at this game, man. This is going to be bad. Don't sell yourself short. I have high, I'm going to, we'll start off very easy. Okay. Like literally, I do old, not. Old, old Hickory. Is that Lincoln? No, that'd be Andrew Jackson. <laughs> I'm telling you, I got, like, this is going to be... And, uh, no, no, no. He, he got that nickname because he was a strict and bold military officer during the War of 1812. Okay. okay. You've heard of the great communicator. There's another one. Is that Reagan? That would be Ronald Reagan, right? Because okay. he, he had obviously was very comfortable in front of the camera, having been an actor before. So, all right. So now they're going to get a little tougher. <laughs> great. <laughs> the Machiavellian Belshazzar. 
I, I, um, Johnson. No, that would be Martin Van Buren. And that wasn't a compliment, Kirby. It was given to Van Buren by his detractors for his insincere, insincerity in political matters. Yeah. Uh, here's one of my favorite ones from the list. His accidency. <laughs> oh, is that Gerald Ford? No, uh, he, that would have been, that would have been, I'm going to count that. We're going to count that as correct. <laughs> okay. It's uh, John Tyler because he assumed uh, he was William Henry Harrison's vice president. He got the nickname when he became president after Harrison's death. Okay. I think okay. it'd be the same thing with Ford because after Nixon resigned, he became. Well, I just thought Ford was, was legendary for falling down and yeah. stuff. And okay. so that's where, I, okay. 10 cent Jimmy. Uh, Jimmy Carter? Nope. James Buchanan. <laughs> The Bachelor president got this unflattering nickname after he said that 10 cents a day was a fair wage for manual laborers. <laughs> oh, my God. This is the, like, I will never do worse than, than I do on this game. Oh, you got still some ways to go. <laughs> His fraudulency. Man, I can just start naming presidents. I mean, yeah, you, I know you, that's, that's pretty much what I got. Yeah. His fraudulency, uh, Trump. No, brother to B. Hayes. He was so nicknamed because he allegedly stole the campaign of 1876. Okay. The coiner of weasel words. Uh, Kennedy. This nickname was uh, given to Woodrow Wilson by Teddy Roosevelt because he was such a weasel in politics. I'm going to start Googling presidents. <laughs> Uncle Jumbo. Uh, <laughs> the Roosevelt. No. Uh, that would be Grover Cleveland because he was a rotund man weighing in at a stout 270. The drunkard. <laughs> Ulysses S. Grant. That's a good one, but no, Grover Cleveland. Uh, I'm sorry, no, I'm sorry. Franklin Pierce. He was known to have uh, quite a few pops on a daily basis. Okay. Sleeping Beauty. Sleeping Beauty. Mm -hmm. Um Ulysses at Grant. <laughs> nope. That would be William Howard Taft because he was known for nodding off in cabinet meetings. Okay. General Mum. General Mum. Yeah. Ulysses General S. Mum. Grant. Are you just going to say Ulysses S. Grant for the rest of these? Is that how this is going to go? <laughs> I mean, I'm not going to get you're it right violating, anyway. You are violating the spirit of the game, sir. And I, for one, on behalf of all seven listeners, <laughs> hey, I'm not going to sit for it. Okay, cool. Um, General Mum would be William Henry Harrison for his tendency to keep Mum on controversial issues. Okay. The last of the cocked hats. Papa Chubby. James Monroe. <laughs> That's right. The man behind the Monroe Doctrine was the last of the major politicians in his day to have fought in the Revolutionary War, <laughs> which during, uh, during the Revolutionary Fires wore cocked hats. Uh, okay. Long Tom. Long time. Oh, Ulysses S. Grant. Thomas Jefferson. <laughs> Tom is in there. How do you even not how do you even not approach Thomas Jefferson? Long Tom. At six foot two and a half feet, he was six inches taller than the average man in his day, Kirby. Wow. You get a sincere and heartfelt F for the effort here. <laughs> but um, good job by you. You do such a good job on these games. I feel bad when I bomb it like that. I'm sorry. Yeah, no, it's okay. I you know, look, I I'm a student of history. I mean, I actually did this from memory, so don't worry about it. It's fine. But uh, you know what I'm glad I don't have to do from memory, Kirby? That's go to the Promo Pulse app. I don't have to remember going there because it sits there right on my home screen. It's so, so easy to press. shit. How dare you, sir? <laughs> Sorry, Jason. I didn't you, mean to sir. do that in the middle of this thing. I, I, if I had human emotion right now, I would be experiencing something close to frustration. <laughs> Sorry. Thankfully, I don't. Did it all from memory I'm, and my paper and my internet and the Google. Ulysses all right. S. Grant. And Ulysses S. Grant. <laughs> uh, but no, but seriously, if you want to grant yourself a good time, hey, hit that Promo Pulse app. No one's going to cause you call you the drunkard when you use the Promo Pulse app, nor are they going to call you a fraudulent weasel of words. No, what they're going to call you is smart intelligent. You know why? Because you're going to be able to not just go and download that app for free. That's a given. Come on, folks. <laughs> no, you're going to be able to search, save, and share all that fabulous content, all those supplier specials, everything you want. It's going to give you ideas. It's going to inspire you, and it's going to give you information. Head over to your local app store. I said it again. 
Nobody goes to a local app store. So pick up your phone, open up your app store and download Promo Pulse. You're not going to be sorry you did. You are sorry you probably listened to the podcast this long, but you're not going to be sorry you did that. All right, Kirby, uh, I think that'll about do it for episode number 17. I've got a hot date with a can of sour cream and onion Pringles right down the road. That's right!